An all-star, most improved player, Jimmy Butler, is in the house from the Bulls. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank y'all for having me. Hold on. What? I know good and damn well you didn't come into the, onto this show on national television with practically the same suit on as Skip Bayless. I, I, I mean, what is up with that? He don't have one, Jordan. Who's cleaner? I, I, I think I got him a little bit. I'm yeah. not sure about that. The sneakers, the Jordans the, with the that Jays shirt. The Jays get me. I will, mm -hmm. I will give you that. And he asked me how many pairs of Jordans I have. I actually have four. I just counted okay. it in my head. He's got like 400, but he, he works for the brand. He endorses the brand. Well, he should endorse the brand. MJ. Yeah. We, we need better. to get Skip some Sky Blue Jays. I've got Sky Blue. You I've do. got that, that exact pair. I do, not, maybe not your right. pair, but, you know. <laughs> Photo op. Let's put it on Instagram. Jimmy Butler and Skip Bayless with the same wardrobe. Y'all need y'all need to change the subject. Well, need to change the subject. Girl. Great minds think alike. All right, we have to put you on the hook here. Let's get right into it. What oh. led to you re-signing with the Bulls? Uh, I started in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I think the fans have embraced the way that I play. Um... They've loved me whenever I wasn't too good of a player. And now I guess I'm okay. I'm pretty decent. So I think it was a place for me. Incredible. Well, you're better, than, you're better than decent. I'm proud of you, bro. Because first of all, let, let, let's make sure we understand this. The 20-point average, you know, the 35% 30, shooting from three-point range, the 46% shooting from the field, being an all-star, the most improved player, defending better than most in this league. But more importantly than that, you're somebody who bet on yourself. You and I were together like the first game mm -hmm. of the season in Chicago, and this guy couldn't reach an agreement with the Chicago Bulls, so you bet on him himself and this is what happened for you i want to know how tough this season was for you were you worried at all knowing that a contract year was coming you bet on yourself and obviously any kind of injury or anything like that could have cost you millions of dollars it it crossed my mind but i was so confident in the work that i put in last summer mm -hmm. that i knew what i was capable of i knew what i was going to do this year uh, my trainer chris johnson who i call dodo because he's not the smartest individual <laughs> Um, wait, wait, he's he's sitting he's, across he's, he's the floor, there. right? Yeah, he's right. definitely he's, over there. Where'd he go, Dodo? Dodo. He prepared me ex extremely well, and he's doing the same thing this summer, and I'm I'm still working to get better. Go ahead, Skip. Do you want to ask about Derrick okay. Rose? I, 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 well, it's definitely coming. I okay. uh, let's, we we got to do it. Uh, you, go, go, ahead. go. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm going to tell you what I hear from a lot of people I know in Chicago, where I, okay. I once worked. That that Derrick Rose is a little threatened by you because. You have emerged as, at this point in your career, maybe a little better all-around player than he is given his, his knee issues, which are ongoing, and that he's just a little threatened. You've been quoted as saying you have absolutely no problem with Derek, and I believe that 100%. But have you felt, or how much have you felt, a little friction on his part back to you? I don't, I don't think it matters. If we win, this isn't, this isn't an issue. But since we lost... It's an issue. I think it gives y'all something to talk about, to tell you the truth. Okay. But if we win, if we win the championship, nobody's worried about any of that. The only reason that it came up is because we lost. I don't think we have any beef or whatever you want to call it. I think we just want to win. We didn't win, so now we're beefing. Now we have problems with each other, and I don't think that's the case. Ha have, have there been any minor incidents on his part back to you, no. little things that he would say? No. I think he's always been supportive of me uh, being aggressive. Um, especially on offense, we all know that I'll be the aggressor on defense. So, I mean, from what I can tell, the, the, the guy's always been in my corner. For the record, I've never believed that for one second for two reasons. Number one, Derrick Rose's personality, that's not him. Yeah. Number two, and more importantly, the greater Jimmy Butler is, the better it is for D. Rose because it takes more pressure off of D. Rose. And we've always said for years that D. Rose needed some help. At, at, at the guard spot so he could get somebody that could feed off of him and he could feed off of them and they could go from there. Based on what you saw this year, however, with Derrick Rose, how confident are you in him moving forward from a health standpoint? Because even though he had some great moments, here's my issue with Derrick Rose, the consistency. Because that last game, that when y'all didn't show up, he got outplayed by Matthew Della Vadova. That was a problem for me. And ain't no way. The, the, Matthew Delaware Dover, no disrespect. I like him. He shouldn't even be mentioned in the same breath as Derrick Rose. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, I don't know. I think we came out flat. And then uh, at a, a certain point in time, that was the game. Um, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be, but I think that's what happened. Um, I don't think there's, there's a problem with that. 
I, I'm confident in the group of guys that we have. You know, we basically got the same team back mm -hmm. um, with the addition of, of Bobby Portis, our, our new rookie. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, I'm comfortable where we're at. You know, new coach, but we'll be all right. Why would you be comfortable considering how the season ended and the fact that you guys just got to the semifinals of the Eastern Conference? If a championship is the objective, the roster stays the same, what would make you feel comfortable? We're, we're getting to know each other a lot more. We... we um, everybody didn't play together, you know, me and Derek for the first time, really, mm -hmm. um, with the addition of Powell. Everybody's in a different role. Mm -hmm. Now I think everybody understands their role. So moving forward, I think everybody's okay. Everybody's okay with me being much more aggressive on offense like I was not the past few seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all, it's all a building process. It's all a learning curve. So I think we're ready. You made your name in this league on the other end of the floor, the defensive end. How hard is LeBron James to guard? I mean, you see what the guy does on a nightly basis. He's one of the best players to play the game. You, you have to give him credit for that. Um, but I, I look forward to it. I think guys respect guys that don't back down from challenges, you know, and that can, can guard and then go score on the other end. Um, I just think uh, he's, a, he's a hell of a player, along with a lot of other players in this league. But he... I mean, he put that team on his back. He made that team go. I wanted to transition back to Chicago for a second in terms of Tom Thibodeau. I mean, he coached there the last five years. He's universally recognized as one of the better coaches in the NBA. Y'all won 50 games last year. You get to the semifinals of the Eastern Conference, and Tom Thibodeau is without a job. What was it like last year? Because he clearly had lame duck status attached to him as a coach, regardless of what anybody tries to deny. That was a fact, and it's proven now that he's gone. What was it like for you guys playing under him, not just last year, but in your career? What has it been like for him, like playing under him? It was great for me. You know, this is my first coaching change, so it's, um, it's something I haven't experienced before. I think Tiz is really great at what he does. Um, you know, you could talk about how everything came up that he was going to get fired after that season, but his job was still to win games. And that's what he tried to do to the best of his abilities. Uh, I still have a relationship with him. I don't think that that's a problem. I mean, he was my coach for the first four years while I was in this league. Um, he's um, a good guy, um, and I know he's going to be back in this league very soon. So should the Cavs still be favored to win the East? <sighs> You think I'm gonna say yeah to that question? I'm just well, curious. I, I, I'm curious to hear what you say because I, I, I think you're starting to come out of your shell a little bit. I think I like our chances. Um, I don't think anybody plays this game to lose, so I can't say that the the Cavs are gonna win the East. I think. Uh, so should you be the favorite? Out. Of course. Why not? Okay. Why can't we be the favorite? Yes, you know why? LeBron. Yes, they have. LeBron. You know why? Yes, they have LeBron. That's okay. He's he's been beat before. I mean, not by us, but it's it's possible. Anything's possible. Well, I must admit to you, let me just say it to your face. Last year, we walked into the season, and the mentality was it was about Cleveland and Chicago. Even though Atlanta came out of nowhere, I knew they weren't beating Cleveland in the Eastern Agreed. Conference Finals, and, and they lucked up with the, the seeding that they had because I felt if they faced y'all, they probably would have lost to y'all in the playoffs. Having said all of that, this is a different year. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about Cleveland, forget Cleveland. That's a given because of LeBron. They'll be there. I think Miami has eclipsed y'all. Oh, really? Has eclipsed. Yes, I, I said it. I said it. Okay. I mean, I know they got you, and they got Derrick Rose, and, and I'm a fan of Paul Gasol's. I don't know about the health of a Joakim Noah. That's a question mark. I don't know what Hoiberg is going to bring to the table because he's replacing a great coach in Tom Thibodeau, all right? But I look at Miami. Drogic's a good pickup. D. Wade is coming back. Bosh will be healthy. Whiteside is no joke. Dang is no scrub. And... I like the additions they added with rookie Justice Winslow, Gerald Green, Amari Stoudemire. I look at the Chicago Bulls, and I'm not going to lie to you. I see the same old Bulls. Y'all are tough. Y'all ain't going to back down anybody. You got a lot of heart. You ain't scared of anybody. You're going to make the playoffs. But I think Cleveland and Miami are better right now. Okay, okay. Um, can't, I can't change your mind. You are who you are. <laughs> I will say that. But, uh... I'm sticking with us. They got two Houston guys in, in uh, Winslow and Gerald Green, too. So that's, that's you right. know, that's Houston guys. That's right. Mm -hmm. stuff too. Which means that that's even more reason for you to be confident in them because you believe in yourself and your homeboys. Yeah. So you got two homeboys that's on another team. You're making my point. I like my city, but I'm Chicago's is my city now. Like, I've embraced it. They've embraced me. We, we got to take it. We have to.
Mm. Listen, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. Right. Clearly, we're it. not done. Will you stick around? I'll be here. All right. More Jimmy Butler after the break. This is first Jimmy take Butler. from L.A. He's Cali cool yeah. right now. That's Kinda the, that's like the city one. Very white voice. <laughs> Ball with uh, Jimmy Butler, and uh, Skip, uh, will you uh, take over? I want over to know here. a little bit more about Jimmy Butler, the emerging star. Mm -hmm. I read the other day that, that you had the guts to admit publicly that you actually like Taylor Swift's music. Could you please explain yourself? Well, we won't talk basketball. We'll talk a little Taylor Swift. Yeah. Her music's very catchy. Don't judge me. I think, <laughs> I think that... Uh, it's something that I can listen to before a game because it's, it's up to beat. It used to be country. I'm a big country fan. Uh, he's big, okay. But he's Houston, Texas. I am. Okay. Uh, she's talking about Texas, by the way. Um, and she f switched over to like more pop. And so, you know, I dance and I sing to it. And I end up on the internet because of Nas and some of my other teammates. And, you know, I get hounded for it, but I am who I am. It's hey, listen, her listen. the music? The music. It's, okay. it's, it's the music. It's the music. But I, was, I will tell you this. Look, man, I'm a Katy Perry fan. You see, so I mean, the, the, so we are, we are, the, 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 that, 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 that's a teenage, I mean, the California Fireworks. girls with her and Snoop Dogg, I mean, the whole bit, I, lo I oh. love Katy Perry, love Katy Perry, and then, the, 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 you know, some people say Taylor Swift, but I say Ka Katy Perry, and I'm from Hollis, Queens, so it's all right, all right. it's all right. Skip, you okay. have anyone you want to share yeah, we, with? I don't know, it's it. not about me, it's about Jenny. That's right, it's about, yeah. it's about but, but let me say this, as you look at so many players in the NBA, to piggyback off of what Skip was asking you, what do you think makes you different than what than what exists in the NBA today from other players? I think I, I am who I am on the floor, off the floor. Um, I'm, I'm not going to change. You know, I'm from a small town, not supposed to be here talking to y'all right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be in the NBA, but I'm here. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change who I am as a person. I still love, you know, all of my fans, all the people that helped me to get here. And um, I'm going to continue to be that. After my career, while I'm playing, I will be who I am. Let's go back to your, your basketball team. Coach Tibbs was who he was, maybe to a fault. Mm -hmm. Give us some insight into why that decayed and finally ended so badly for him in Chicago. I really, I, I don't know. I don't think that's, that's my job, you know. That's the general management job. My job is to play basketball, help win games. Obviously, I, I did not have a problem with Tibbs. Um, I think we have a, another great coach in Hoiberg. From where I'm sitting down, um, talking to him and listening to what he has to say and, and his plan moving forward, I mean, I think he knows what he's doing. Give me some insight into how concerned the team is, how concerned you think the city is, that the window of opportunity that y'all have mm -hmm. is is diminishing before our very eyes. Some people look at you guys and think that. To that you say what? Uh, I think we have to prove ourselves. We, we have to win. We can't keep saying we're, this is our year, this is our year, this is our year, and, and not make it happen. Um, it is a concern, but I really think that we're capable of it. You know, if everybody stays healthy mm -hmm. um, and we just play together and play hard, we really can win. But you know, I'm just saying it, like I said, the last year and the year before that, we got to make it happen. So your ex-coach played you more minutes than anybody. Do you want the new coach to cut that down just a little bit? Because I think management wanted to cut down just a little bit. Yeah, I want to play because when I was a rookie and I wasn't playing, I always was nagging. I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. Well, he gave me more minutes than anybody in the league. I can't complain, and I never will complain. Um, I love this game. If that's what my team needs me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Play however many minutes. Let's go back to your belief that your team can contend. Um, I've already told you I think Miami and heard Cleveland you. are heard better first in the East. Yeah, you heard me the first time, but I did, I, my thought wasn't complete, Barry White. It wasn't complete, okay? Here's the deal. Out West, you got San Antonio. That acquired LaMarcus Aldridge, kept Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan obviously staying, et cetera, et cetera. Oklahoma City, we anticipate and hope that the great Kevin Durant will come back healthy. DeAndre Jordan came to his senses and decided to stay in Los Angeles instead Houston of... The, kid. Say what? Houston kid. Yes, yeah, that, that's right. None of them in the Houston Rockets, by the way. Okay, you look at all the things that transpired in free agency. What do you think? Who, who do you think had the best free, uh, free agent period? You're asking me that that's question? Right. That's You're right. You're asking me. No, no, no. I'm not talking about you and your, your, your new deal. You asked me the question. No, no, outside to of you. you. Outside of you. 
Outside, outside of you and the Chicago Bulls. Oh, okay. Who do you think had the best free agency? Uh, I'm going with, with San Antonio. Thank you. I'm going with San Antonio. L.A. is a is a constant mismatch problem for people, and the dude can play. He's a Texas kid, Dallas. Oh, close and, I'm just saying, my state. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. We got the message, but, bro. But, you know, uh, Kawhi is a, is a hell of a player, mm -hmm. and the, the core team that they already have, they've already won it. They've already played together for so many years. They really got better with the additions that they added. Yeah, they lost a, a few pieces, but that one piece in, in L.A., that's going to um, take them over the top. So, you, to conclude all this, you will win the East next year, you're saying. You're on record, right? I have to be on record saying that. I have to. I can't say we're going to lose. Like, <laughs> we don't play this game and lose. Yes, we are, we're not listening to your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you're off the hot seat. Don't worry. Thank you so much. Congratulations on a great season and good luck this upcoming season. I appreciate it. We, we appreciate Congrats, it. Bro. Thank you. Much deserved. It's ESPYs Week. So we're out here in L.A. So another big guest is joining us, Grammy-nominated rapper Big Sean. He's got a new single, One Man Can Change the World. Also his video, you can see it right here now, featuring John Legend and Kanye West off his latest album. We'll talk to him on the other side of the break.